point. All right, y'all, here we go. Um, Been knowing this brother for a long time. You know, watched him do his thing. Come in, kill the rap game. Um, Was part of a dynasty. That whole bad boy thing that I'm so familiar with. Block Entertainment, Bad Boy South. Prolific writer, prolific spitter. Please welcome one of the hottest rappers to ever touch a microphone, my brother, Gorilla Zo. Zo, what up? I appreciate your prayers. What's happening? Thank you. Thank you, brother. That's love. That's love. Nah, Got to get them flowers up. Got to get them flowers up. Yo, I'm, I'm going to tell you, Zo, it's good to see you. We were talking offline, man. I ain't seen you in a long time. So to be able to you know, just conversate with my brother, man. This is this is one of those things that bring me joy. So I'm looking forward to it. Likewise. Likewise. Okay, so let's go to the beginning, man. Um, where'd you come up at? I know, I know when people think of you, they think Atlanta, but are you from the heart of Atlanta or, or are you from the outskirts? I'm from I'm from uh I grew up in East Point. Well this first my my youth, East Point, um, and before that, Griffin, uh, my folks from Griffin, Griffin, Georgia, um, so it's yes, yeah, it's, it's outskirts. You know what I'm saying? I was uh, I was born in um, San Francisco. Oh, yeah, I was born in the Bay. Okay, so which way? How old were you when you made your way to the South? Yeah, I, I, I was one uh, when they. My dad was playing football out there. I met my mom. You know, they, they had me, and I think after uh, after all born, and, and he he went back home, and she followed him. So I've been I've been that pretty much. You know, I was raised in Griffin. You know what I'm saying? Till uh, till he passed, uh, I like nine. You know, I moved up. My mom had left and got married, moved to East Point. It was you know what I'm saying? It's Fulton County, but it's it's not Atlanta. <laughs> It's his own city, within a city, borders within borders. So, um, yeah, I moved there when I was like nine and stayed there until I was like 14, 15, and I went to Job Corps in Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? And, um, uh, came back, lived everywhere in Atlanta on every side, you know, trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? So, you know, yeah, I, don't, I spent my time in Atlanta. I stayed there, and then I actually stayed there until I was 33 and um, moved to Miami. So... You know, from Miami, I stayed in Miami a couple of years. Uh, did a lot, a lot of traveling, working uh, on different uh, genres of music and di- different de- demographics and spaces. And uh, from there, uh, COVID hit, and I moved to Orlando. You know, and after uh, you know, after COVID died down, I'm back moving around. So here we go. Got you, got you. Yo, let, let me ask you, what kind of kid was you, Zo? Was you always easy going or was you in the streets? I was in the streets because I had to be in the streets. Not because I wanted to be in the streets. You know what I'm saying? When you when you when you in the streets, you really from from it, it ain't nothing to glorify. The whole thing is get out of there. You know what I mean? So um it to this day I don't I don't I don't glorify it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm nobody's from the streets. Everybody's in the streets because they that's that is the situation and the cars that are dealt. I think now you got some people that, you know, they you know some of them, some people go backwards. You know mm-hmm, what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, um, you always want to keep that connection to uh to the hood. You understand what I'm saying? You always want to keep that. You never you don't never want to leave. The space of, of that, but like the streets, the streets ain't for nobody. The streets don't love nobody. The streets, the streets, who own the streets? You know what I'm saying? You can't own, you can't own the streets. And if you do own the streets, you know you can't take it. You can't take it with you. You know what I'm saying? Right. So yeah, was I? I was. I, I definitely was as easy going as I as I could be. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I had to, you know, uh, adjust to where I had to adjust to to survive. Say that. Gotcha. You, you, you know, I, I think I saw an interview somewhere. You got kicked out in the ninth grade. Yeah. What? Why so? <sighs> it was more of, I guess, a decision of uh, um, my stepdad. 
he just, you know, he just, he just like, man, hey, you know, can't be two, two, uh, two roosters in a chicken coop. What? Uh, he told me, can't be two roosters in a chicken coop. I'm like, what you saying? My mama chicken head. I, I didn't get what he was saying, but, I, you know, as I got older, I understood, you know what I'm saying? You can't have two, uh, you can't be two kings of a castle. This is castle. So I had to go. You know what I'm saying? And when you gotta go, it was like now I gotta, I gotta find, I gotta find my place in the world. I gotta find somewhere to live. How I'm gonna take care. I'm a kid. You know what I'm saying? Um, and the best thing they, they were saying like man, job corps. You know what I'm saying? Like you can, you should go to job corps. So I went. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, make sure you gonna eat. You gonna get somewhere to live and some food. You know what I'm saying? So necessities to survive. But not only that, I didn't know that. Job call was um, from 16 to, to uh, I think, 24. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, so I had to wait till I was turned 16. So I had to, like, stay around and go to school. And, but I had already made a decision. It was already made for me. I'm not going to be in high school. I'm not even going to be living at this house. So I'm just, you know, pretty much learning. And, you know what I'm saying, just hanging out, you know, staying at different places, people's houses, just, you know, picking up what I could pick up. Um, but in the process of, of going to job call, uh, I, I learned a lot of stuff, but I, I, the biggest thing was uh, adult, so how, how to be a man. Cause mm-hmm. the, when you get it, there ain't no parents, ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, you gotta figure it out. You know what I'm saying? You, you figure it out or you don't figure it out. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I was out, I've always been guided and been surrounded. Um, even when I didn't know it. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I was ever alone in life, but I spent a lot of times in the 3D physical feeling, you know, real alone. I walked I, I walked the whole earth alone. This whole path, like you, and, but I've been thankful for the ones that been there for me and I know it. And, and, and I thought I told you, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because, mm-hmm. you know, it was always, I was never in a, in a position where it was terrible or horrible anytime you know there's nothing i couldn't bear and if i couldn't bear those people that are bear with me I mean, that's you, right you, yes sir so uh but yeah, yeah that's it on that you, let, let me ask you has has hip-hop always been in you like at what age did you start rap rapping and i know you you many people know you as a as a artist but you are a uh, insane writer like your writing abilities are top notch and you've written for some of the biggest artists in the game when 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 did you actually start taking the whole writing and rapping thing serious um uh, <sighs> wordplay was a you know it's a it's a gift it's uh it's some. Um, when you when you you know what I'm saying when you young it's back in the day they call them Renaissance man. Um, basically, you can do pretty much anything you put your mind to. Um, most of it, you know what I'm saying. Most of anything, you know, we we bless like that. You know, we we tap in. We, we bless like that, and we got we carry certain things. Um, it don't get serious on no level until it has to be serious. A serious situation happens when you put you you're put in a place where you have to make a serious decision. Life changes, life changing things and unlock, the, uh, unlock the stuff inside of you that you don't know that's done. You know what I'm saying? So um, when I seen, when I seen I could make money and take care of these children I'm having as a child, I'm like, man, I don't know, but I got a chance to like, if I, if I take something serious, I can, some will work. And uh, I always had uh, invisible conversations with the, with, with the unseen, with the, you know what I'm saying? Like, God, I'm, I always talk, you know, you know, when you by yourself, you find a friend. So my, my, my uh, what you call, my, I, I don't know what say, make-believe friend was God. So that's who I talked to, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, I would get guys showing away, and, and I, when when you seen brothers pulling up in cars and having this and having that, some of the stuff I had, 
scene or fountain because you don't see it on TV. And then in your hood, you don't see it. So when you start seeing things like, oh, this is possible. Even if the even if I can get some of the raindrops that drop off the umbrella, that'd be <laughs> it's possible. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so uh I started taking it serious because everybody else was taking everybody, it was serious getting over at Block Entertainment and Bad Boy from the outside, you know, people are like, oh, I love the music, you know what I'm saying? I love this, this. it's like y'all having fun. Yeah, it's fun, but it's 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 work that you ain't ready for. You know, these these guys wake up before everybody and they go to sleep after everybody. They they carry the world on their shoulder. They take care of these, they are, these, these guys, these, it's a lot, you know what I'm saying? And and, and uh, when, it, when I seen how serious everybody was, I had to jump in there and be serious. I, it was like, Pick the let pick the side where everybody that lazy or it, people doing just enough, or pick the side where the where guys are winning and they're owning their own stuff and, and they you want to be in these phone calls with these guys, you want to be on these phone calls with these guys. And I, I definitely am thankful that uh I was guided to be, you know what I'm saying, another how, you know, phone calls. How old was you when you started to take it serious? 19. Uh, I tried it for a year. Gave it all I had. It was whack. I was whack. I was, whack. I was in the group. It was whack. Like, but everybody trying to rock. Right, okay. All right. You know, again, I had a chance to invest in a studio. And uh, when you got when you got skin in the game, so I wanted to figure out how to how to how to record and actually really rap. So. You know what I'm saying? Writing was easy. It's mathematics. But the art of recording and understanding tone um, and sound waves and the mathematics of that, along with um, syllables, you know, snares, hi-hats, and, you know, you know, nouns and just phrases and double and triple entendres. And that was like, once I got over there with Bad Boy, Block Entertainment, when I got over there with them guys, because it was serious. I said like 24, 25. 24, okay. 25. Okay. See, you know, Block Entertainment, Block, and shout out to Block, um, Russell Spencer, good brother. Mm -hmm. How did you connect with him? Did you know him before this whole hip hop thing? Did you meet him through you wanting to become an artist or a writer? Like, what was you, what is y'all connection? Um, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't know him before. Um, you know, I didn't know him before. Uh, I knew he had, he had motion and I was at the stage where I was writing records. I wasn't even trying to be an artist. I was just writing dope, like some crazy things. It was different. I knew I had something different. So we was, my man Chris Flame was doing the production. Um, he had, yeah, I don't produce on for like Ludacris and Jay Z. But he was he went to school with my little brother, so like he up he working at the radio station. He uh, was working on Jock's album. It's on Jock's first album. At one time he was working on Jock's album. I had no role that hood figure like that. And I, I was trying to. He was he was he was like, man, this would be good for boys in the hood. Like, man, perfect. This. Let's finish it up and make it, you know, tighten it up and make it for boys in the hood. You know, he went and pitched it. And uh, you know, it wasn't uh it wasn't meant for them. It was meant for me. I didn't know it. Um block pretty much, you know, pushed me into the door and made me stand on it. Like, hey man, you gonna rap and you're gonna stand on it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You good. Like, you know, I'm really thankful. You know what I'm saying? I'm thankful. You know, you never know how much impact you have on other people's lives. You know what I'm saying? You know, the way he impacted my life. I wish, you know what I'm saying? If you could take all the people that come and talk to me about how my music, like, I wish I could hand y'all, like, it ain't me, it's bigger than me, it's us. Mm -hmm the whole, you know what I'm saying? And I, I get what hip hop is. Hip hop can, it, it can't be, it can't be taken 
from us. It, hip hop is a, it's a, it's a bridge. It's a way up and a way out. Nah, absolutely it is. Um, and it's just interesting to me because Block was Block when you met him. I mean, th th this is a guy who worked with yeah, Rick Ross um, out the gate, worked with Nooney and, and uh, Sierra, worked on that first project. You know, Block, he, he worked with Trick Daddy down in Miami. That TLC album, he's a block, block been a part of a lot of huge stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yes, a lot of huge stuff. So how, how did you even get close to him? Because at that time, and, and when you met him, was Boys in the Hood already put together? Because I know you came in with the Hood, hood Nigga record, but yeah. were they always a, um, were they already a group by the time that you came into the scene? Yeah, yeah, it was already a group. Um, it was already a group. Flame gave uh, that record to Block at uh, Young Jock. I want to say album release party, his first album release party, and um, he hit me the next morning. I don't, I don't know if him and uh, him and Puff listened to it. I don't know what happened. He, I know he hit me. He was like, "Man, just come to the studio." Like, what you trying to do with the record? I'm like, I'm trying to sell it. I'm, I'm trying to definitely try to. Y'all got the money over here. I'm trying to sell it. What you trying to do? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, when he was like, man, these niggas ain't finna rap, yo. They they not finna rap, rap. They they write their own stuff. And and uh yeah, they ain't finna do that. So what you wanna do with it? I don't know. I'm trying to sell it. So man, how, can't ain't nobody gonna be able to rap this like you rap. Like your your, your voice. Like, what they call you? <laughs> like Zo. Call you Gorilla Zo. Yeah. <laughs> you Hold on, so Block named you? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. I didn't even know that. Yeah. And, and it's also crazy that you was just trying to sell a record. You didn't even come to him as a rapper like Sami. You like, yo, I'm just trying to get some money. I got a record here. Get, give it to your crew. And, and he's the one who sort of vision for you to rap on that record. And like, yo, this thing sound crazy as it is. You need to spit it. Yep. Yep. Most definitely. All right, man, I can't, I, I, I'm definitely now, I, I'm not ready for this. Oh, this ain't me. I can't, I ain't no rapper. Cause I had my idea of what, you know, what it took to be a rapper. My own personal, you know, idea. And it wasn't, it wasn't that, but I, I, I definitely was, it was a lot of stuff on um, what you would call uh, arts development with me. Mm -hmm. A lot of artist development, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of teaching. You know what I'm saying? From great ones. You know what I'm saying? A lot of teaching, and that's because what nobody say when you're talking about a profession that you know it is. It's 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 um it's art, and art is art. But there there are art museums. There's levels of art. There's ways that art is sold. And there's way so we. So you had I had to be to play in the big leagues. I had to be ready, no matter how I got. Well, sometimes they threw me in the fire. Sometimes I sit down with media training. You know what I'm saying? So you know all of that, all that plays a part, and I, I, that's very important. Everybody, everybody that you know, every everything and everybody is important. You know, what I'm saying? the success of uh, uh, an artist, a song, a label. It takes a lot of energy, you know what I'm saying? It uh, does. It does. You know, you you are known just as much um, as a solo artist as you are for being part of Boys in the Hood. And, mm. and we'll get to that for a second. But, you know, Boys in the Hood at that time, it consisted of Jeezy, um, uh, Jody Breeze, Gee, Duke, um, oh. Who else was in that? It was those four at that at, at, at that time. Did yeah, you know right. any of them? Did you have a relationship with any of them? Oh, no, I know none of them. That's crazy. Okay, so when you find when you originally got into the camp, block tell you, 
yo, you need to rap this record. How long was it before you really started to work with him on a consistent basis? Oh, uh, you know, it, it, it's a, it was a school over there. And it, it wasn't no, like you, you know what I'm saying? You had to, you had to work, you know what I'm saying? No matter what you had going on, you had to work. So it wasn't no way I was going, you know, just come in and start working with people. You got to sit down, you got to learn. You know, you, first thing you learn is, man, let fight, make yourself useful. Ain't nobody, it's, it's already, it's, it's already records and producers. How can you make yourself useful at the studio? So, you know, the first thing for me was like, I can, I see what they, what they, what niggas don't like to do. They don't like, to, they don't like to go get blunts. They don't like to go get their own food and drinks and, and, and niggas don't like to take it out of trash. I'm gonna make myself available for that. That way, I can. I gotta. I gotta. No matter how it turn out, because of where I've come from and where I've been through, I know you gotta make yourself useful. No matter what how it turn out, I'm. I'm. A, I'm an asset, not a liability. And um, from that, I would you know uh, wait around until one of the studios open up, one they go to the club or go hang out with some girls or something, and I slide in the studio. You know, get my, you know, build. I was building my craft, not knowing I was building my craft. I thought I was making hit records every time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was building on, building on my craft. So by the time it took like a year, it took like eight months, eight months before, eight months, of, I, I think, uh, every day promoting how you promote and uh, being in the studio as much as you could be in the studio before that record said, before Hood figure said, pop. And probably like four or five months before that, um, I was basically, it was just basically putting verses on, on, uh, on uh, the Boys in the Hood songs that was already there, because they was already working. And then, you know, a couple hooks. And by the time that Hood figure record blew, the Boys in the Hood album was pretty much done. You know what I'm saying? So it set it set it up with like we could we could follow behind Jock on his promo tour, and then and then bounce off that Boys in the Hood promo tour for the album, and then bounce off that. I was able to drop a solo, you know, album simultaneously. Crazy, but uh, that's kind of how it was. That's how. Yo. It was. I love I love the fact that you said you kind of made yourself indispensable by by humbling yourself for lack of a better way to put it. Dudes didn't want to go get blunts. Oh, I run to the store, ain't no problem. Y'all don't want to take out the trash, not a problem. I do that. And when they was going to the club, or when the studio was just opening and the most of the artists asleep from the night before, that's when you took advantage of the time. Studio just opening, they'll be here two, three hours later. That mean I got two, three hours worth of time. They go to the club at night, studio clear out. That mean I got two, three hours worth of time. I, I think that that part of your story is so super dope, man. And it's so, it, because people need to hear that part. The, the, the literally humbling yourself and doing the things that nobody else want to do. And in the interim, to your point, that's where I really learned my craft. That's where I honed my skills, right there, not even realizing that that's what I was doing. You know, that that movement at that time um, was insane. You know, I had a conversation with Block, and he told me, he was like, yo, you know, Puff gave him something like 15 mil, um, you know, for, for, for Jock and for, um, boys in the hood, and to really get that bad boy South thing off the ground. So I know y'all was up and moving at that point. Then boys in the hood come out, and they just took over, like like you know, killed the game. Um, at the time that they're blowing, your first single hadn't dropped. So are you able to go on the road with them at that point? No, not, no, not. 
Oh, uh, not initially. Not initially. First of all, I had to learn. I had to. Uh, I was. That's that. That helped me. That helped me too. Even though I wanted to. Of course, you know what I'm saying. Uh, before you get up, you know that's that fire. That's the. Uh, I remember the first time, a couple of times I went out on the road. Um, Block was with me. He knew whatever he would. He strategic, strategic. So he like you know we ride we doing, but he don't tell me he finna he finna throw me on stage. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking at these crowds. I'm like this this is crazy. Oh yeah, hey Rico. Hey, go Rico. Let's go back there. They hand me a mic. What you doing? Go out. Go, go, go do your thing. Man, I don't know no movements. And that's a whole nother thing. I had this up another part of the game. I don't know none of this. So I remember the first time I went out, I was in Memphis. And I stepped out and I was doing a little freedom folks just looking at me. And I heard a girl say, That ain't no fucking young jock. <laughs> <laughs> And I said, a, a Heineken bottle said, <laughs> I said, man, bro, I don't know if I could have gave up right there, I would have. Like, boy, this is going to be this disappointing. Yeah, the record dope and it's going somewhere, but these folk don't like me. And not knowing, they don't know you. You know what I'm saying? They, they you got to think, that ain't, they didn't come here to see you. They came, uh-huh. here to see you. you know, they came for the hits, they came for the man, the man that I was job. Um, and I'm thankful that, you know, you know, Jock didn't ever hate on me or, you know what I'm saying, push me down or, or, or belittle me, you know what I'm saying, or, or to where I felt uncomfortable, you know what I'm saying, uh, following in his footsteps. Cause dog was marching in a big way. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of, uh, of Block throwing me in the fire. He knew I was gonna get burnt and he knew how to deal with it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Man, man, shut up, bro, we gonna do these. You gotta, you gotta, get, you gotta get in it, you gotta get in that fire. Get in the water until you learn how to swim. Ain't nobody finna let you drown, but you gotta get in that water. So, yeah. So, so them boys blew up. Um, Jock, his first single off the charts. Y'all rocking and rolling at that point. Mm. Did did you start to to feel any friction? Like, at what point did you feel friction within the camp? And I'm speaking about boys in the hood specifically. Because after the first album dropped, you know, Jeezy, he had his own thing going on. So he was kind of in the group, but he was also focusing on his own solo project. Did, did you feel any tension in the group at that point? No, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I can't really even speak on on, on that because I wouldn't know them how they felt. You know what I'm saying? That's like, uh, I can suspect but I don't know, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't feel it, because I ain't had nothing to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, I don't even know if it was tension. Uh, but I do know brothers fight. And when you've got, you know, grown men, you know, testosterone, egos, and money, and you know, un- unlimited everything, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be some, it's gonna be some off, you know, gonna be some furniture moving here though, somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay. Uh so Jeezy Lee the group. And and for that matter, did you have a good relationship with Jeezy? Oh, I, I don't I don't I don't I don't know him. Still to this day? I don't know him now. I don't know him. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, Boys in the Hood first album come it do its thing, blow up. Jeezy leads the group. At what point did Block approach you about getting in the group? Um, he approached me about getting in the group before he, before he approached me about doing a solo, solo, uh, some solo. I had a, um. The group situation came first. So, so what was that conversation like? He's like, I'm gonna put you in boys in the hood. <laughs> Just that simple? Yeah. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put you in boys in the hood. I know them niggas. They were looking at me like, man, who is this? Who, 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 who
You know what I'm saying? So, but, uh, you know, it didn't take long for, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? You cut from, you cut from whatever cloth you cut from. So I'm thankful for the cloth that I'm cut from, you know what I'm saying? Because you can't, I can't change up as a gift and a curse. I'm, I'm real, to, what, what, you, what you see is what you get. So it's all real quick. Whatever it is, it is. I'm loyal. Okay, so so how did the group embrace you? Like here you are, you you not the you not the gorilla zone that the world know today. You the young dude who's taking out trash in the studio, and now yeah. you want to now now you a member of the group. Like like, I mean Jody's Jody at that point. Dude, hey, dude, yeah. he's, he's, Jody, I, that dude, bro. Jody, Jody's still that dude. You know, I'm always going. You know, they they uh. They, they didn't, they, you know, they they they, gave, they made it as hard as they, they supposed to make it, and they they uh they embraced me as much as they they should have. Um, I don't think it was no no malice. It was no malice uh at all. Uh, it was, you know, it, it, they 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 pulled me in like a brother. You know, we and in in that, you know, it's certain, you know, it's, it's codes that we live by. If they not in you, if them codes ain't already encoded in you, you will have a hard time because it, we live by codes. You know what I'm saying? And and we hold we hold ourselves and hold each other accountable. That's so, right. <laughs> and I I learned you know, and nobody got a problem with telling you, hey boy, you tripping. You know what I'm saying? And if and I feel, if I feel like I'm not tripping, I'm gonna say I'm not, we can go. He can go as far as he's gonna go, and it will. It will when you're dealing with, you know, when you're dealing with grown men, you know, being out, being up, being away from home, away from their families, away from everything, it, you, you know, for for certain for amounts of time, every day, it get, it, it get rough. But it's, it's uh, that's just part of the game. You know what I'm saying? Every rock band or every, you know, country band, they all don't been through it, so it ain't nothing different with hip hop. You know what I mean? It's just. You know, being able to experience it, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. What was what was the recording process like? You know, working on that second Boys in the Hood album. Are y'all in the studio all together? Do some of y'all come in and lay your verses? At other times, some come in and lay their verses. Like, like, what was that whole process for you? We was pretty much in the studio together by the time it was uh, it was album times. We, we had, you know. I want to say we had probably cut a hundred records. You know what I'm saying? So we had cut a lot of records enough for like two, put out two different mixtapes and then then the album. So we had, yeah, we had cut a lot of records. Um, in order to do that, we, you know, talking, talking, you, you trying to, you trying to do two records a day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Which, which ain't hard. You talking about, you know. You're just trying to not, you know, get them off. You don't, you ain't, you don't know how it's gonna turn out. So like, that's consistent every day coming in. Everybody, yeah. Some people can only be here for this amount of hours. You don't need everybody there the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Once you know, Jody a hook, Jody, Jody a hook Meister. So once Jody, you know, he finished his hook, he can kind of slide it, move how he wants to, because he gonna come back. He gonna lace his verse. You know what I'm saying? He gonna drop his verse. Uh. You know, getting magical with it with his words, and you know, um, understanding voice tone. So he he, but he was he pretty much he stayed in the studio with me. To we, um, I was more in the studio with Gita, Gi than anybody. Big Gi, mm -hmm. uh, who come in do a thing, but actually in the in the studio, I was I spent the most time with Gi. Got you. Got you. Okay, so 2007 roll around. This is a big year. This is damn near your coming out party. Um, yeah. You know, and, and I want to say even before the Boys in the Hood album dropped and before your solo project dropped, Young Jock, you was on the Bottle Popping record with him. And um, what's the other record that you was on uh, with him? The Coffee Shop joint. Mm -hmm. So your whole world changed around that point. What was that like for you? World win. 
overwhelming. Uh, felt overwhelming. Uh, you don't you don't know what. It's, it's, it's scary. It's scary. Everything that you try to, it's like the opposite. You try to stay un, under the radar, undetected. You don't want to make a big footprint. Like none of that. It all flips. Your footprint has to be everywhere. You got to talk, you got to talk and, and be everywhere you are. Everything's being watched, recorded. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it just changes. It, it, it goes from really being a, a, a stray dog, a street dog, like a, like a, a you know what I'm saying, a survivor to, you know, you don't be groomed up and fed up and, and, you know, shaped in the shape of a, a, a prize dog. Now you sitting on like, it, it, and it's every day. So seeing, and the speed of that. See, for me, I don't know. But y'all know, y'all got this. It's there. There's phase one, phase two, phase three. This is where the budget's going here. This is what on this day you're gonna be here. The whole thing. You, uh, when you design, uh, how can I say it? Bird's eye view, sitting in the skybox. You see the whole game, right? You see the whole game. But when you out on the field for the first time, uh, it's it's fast. It's fast, it's like, you know, it's like sports. You go into the big league, you, you hear cats talk about, man, professionals a lot faster than college. It college a lot faster than high school. Correct. Straight, you know, straight to that. So it was fast, it was, it was a, a whirlwind. You know something, how, how did you even get on the, I mean, Jock is coming off a monster crossover record is going down. His album is platinum. How did you even get on his first two singles off his second, his follow up album? Uh, I think a combination of uh, Block and Jock, and then um, it fitting well, I guess you know, um, Harv and Puff, everybody liked it or liked the idea. But how it happened? Well, I'm saying it's all designed. Block. Uh, Block was playing and he was in the skybox. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> okay, I'm pretty sure he said, all right, Jock need a single. Uh, coffee Shop, I, I think that's Dream on a single. I think that's Dream on Coffee Shop singing that. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and uh, he made sure he put me on that. He got me some light. And I appreciate both of them for that. The same. Yeah, but, but I, what, what I'm saying is, it ain't like you are a real zoe that the world look like. You 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 had the opportunity of a lifetime yeah. at that point to be featured on a major artist first Sing. single follow up album, major. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> hey, what can I say? I I can't. I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't, I, how, who, how? But at this point in time, it's, it's how, how, how big um, a budget is, or the budget is. I can't move and come stand on somebody's budget. Hey, I'm ready to come out, put me on the single. Dress me up and put me in the budget. I, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So I got to say, you know, I'm thankful. I'm super thankful. I don't think it would be a gorilla zone if those moves wasn't made. Nah, nah, not at all. And for that matter, you know, you you said earlier that that Jock was always good to you. You know, how how did those records come? Like, was those records completed, and then they put you on it, or was you and Jock in the studio writing together? And he's like, "Yo, I, you know, at the time that records are recorded, that's block none of us know." That's, Yo, go block, ahead. that's block fighting for. Uh, he was fighting for what he knew he needed to, he needed to happen. So, bottle popping. Um, was brought to me, dude. Sample took a sample off a hood figure. Like, well, I got your, I got your next single, though. And I played it. And I was like, oh, whoa, whoa. Block heard it. And I automatically went, man, load this up. 
because Jock will be here in like an hour. I want to just knock this out before Jock get here because I ain't gonna be able to get back in the studio. So the engineer loaded it up and Block was like, oh, hey, come ride with me. We took a ride. I think we went to, he, he took me to go get some clothes. He took me shopping. And I think we went to go, went to go, we went to uh Fezzi and he bought me a chain. Now the whole time in my head, I'm telling the engineer, don't let nobody touch this record. <laughs> I'll be back. But Block knew what he was doing. By the time I got back, Jock had already did the record. You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> so, uh, and it, it was the best thing, but at that time I was, I was, I was pissed. I didn't get it. I'm like, man, I don't take, take, took my record, took my record, but not knowing like, what is he's bigger than you right now? The, the, the budget's on him. The best thing he, you can do is ride the wave. And, uh, that, you know, that's kind of what Block told me. He was like, man, you was you even you? signed? Was you even signed at that point? Yeah, yeah, I was signed. You were signed. Yeah, I was signed. He, he was telling me, "Best thing you do, if you want to make it where you need to go, just ride the wave." Nah, that's the formula right there. Just piggyback off of somebody who's already popping, and because of that, I mean, coffee shop, bottle popping. I mean, you got that look to set you up. So now when you drop your joint, the world is ready for you. Yeah, yep. Get out your own way. Get out Get out your own way, young man. Let's talk about your solo project. Uh, first and foremost, what made you decide to go solo? Was it just as a result of the fact that, that Boys in the Hood, the group itself, was starting to break up? Or was that always the plan for y'all? I mean, for me, I just knew what I knew. And all I knew how to do at that time was work. If I didn't work, I didn't eat. Mm -hmm. I never changed. That's how I am now to this day. If you are, if you can't be used, you're useless, right? And I seen that, oh wow, these records are like, they're like, they're like mushrooms. They're like uh, for Mario Brothers, they're like, um, uh, the coins for the coins for Sonic, meaning it's a group of cats that don't make music, right? They don't make music, but they make decisions, right? And then that you know what I'm saying? They 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 these these, these it's some grown it's some grown powerful strong black men that got it that you know they got it and and but they not ever finna walk in the booth. They just look, they but they come up when they when they pull up they're like what they want to hear something new. And I can see the temperature change when a Boys in the Hood record gets done, or two or three of them get done, or or, or, or a drop record get done, or even when I do a record. So once I figured out, all I gotta do is deliver records. All I gotta do is deliver. I know how to move. I know how to make sure no matter what happens, how the temperature goes up and down. If I deliver a record every day, I'm doing my job. Cause nobody expects me to, to do anything outside of what I do. Matter of fact, when you get out your lane, you become a problem. Cause you ain't great at it. We, we don't need Steph Curry to play center. He probably does know how to rebound, but he's not built for, re, for to be the best rebounder. Just, it doesn't have the, 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 the body the frame for it. But so we want you to be who you are. Steph, hold the ball. Do your things, you know, shoot and score and, and lead and guide. We don't need you down here uh, being Charles Barkley. We don't need you because it just don't fit. So saying that, um, I didn't have to, uh, to, to worry about uh, the designs of a single cover or, uh, you know, get on those big meetings, you know, to see where a budget going to go. I ain't have to go, I ain't have to, you know, I had that one my job, my job to make everybody else's job easy. 
Let's make sure I gave you a record every day. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, so again, that 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 Boys in the Hood second album come out didn't do the the backup in the Chevy didn't do as great as the first one did. You all right now you're already out there with Jock piggybacking with him with his first two singles, and it's your mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Hood figure drop. Mm -hmm. Your world must have changed almost overnight. Cause it's one thing to be on a jock record. It's another thing to be part of a four member group, but it's a whole other thing when you the center of attraction. Everybody came to see you. It's your video. The, the, the marquee says Gorilla Zoe. <laughs> when that record dropped, yeah. how, how did your world change? Did it, did it instantly touch down for you? Did you feel like, yo, this record it, yeah. it, it started out slow, but it picked up? Like, what's going through your brain? I didn't know it, how, it, it was, it, when it happens, it happens behind the scenes first. So, and I'm not, you don't, if you don't know that you ain't behind the scenes, you don't know that, you know, more people are flying in and scouting this record and checking the crowd participation. And seeing when, how long, how many, how long is it gonna take before it gets to where we need to get to before we do what we gotta do? So for me, I didn't see all that. I'm just, you know, I don't even know how I go. So at that point in time, it feels like it happens literally. One day it's lukewarm, one day it's pow. It feels like that, but it, I know it's the work and the decision making, the dates and times, all that's, all that's real. Um. But I it instantly when it hit, it instantly like it hit. It hit. I'm talking about it hit. Okay, it hit. let me help you out right here. Like we we talk in 2007. Um your joint drops, it peaks at number 18 on the Billboard Top 200. Out of 200 records of the millions of records that's out there, your joint peak at number 18. Come in number eight on the R&B and hip hop albums chart. And number three on the top rap albums. You a bona fide star at that point. Yeah. Like legit bona fide star. You out there, you doing shows. How much are you getting for a show at this point? Between, I think from my, my knowledge, like 2017, and 20, you know what I'm saying? I did like between seven and, and then ain't the money ain't the same, the numbers ain't the same as they are today. You know what I'm saying? So like that was to jump out the gate with that, man, that was crazy. That was yeah, crazy. I mean, you're killing it at that point. You're making a lot of money. And you know, I ask all rappers this, like when, when, when that money started rolling in, what was your first big purchase? House. Bought a crib. So you actually did right by your money. I did I did the best that I um that I knew. You know, you make uh, you can always the more you learn, the more you live, the more you grow. You know what I'm saying? And and uh hindsight is a lot clearer. But uh yeah, I, I think I I I did good uh where I came from to where I, where I came from to where I was going and where I'm at, I think I'm, I'm for sure, for sure. Just and, and that's just being guided. You know what I'm saying? Because you can do what you want to do. And if ain't nobody around, say, hey man, you know, don't forget why you're doing this. You know, don't forget why you're doing this. Don't forget what you know what you told me. That the reason why you wanted you would do it, you know. You know what I mean? So it was always for me, it was always, it's always family. It was mm -hmm. always, 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 always thought about. Uh, my motivation was uh, people I love. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I don't, I know what I can, what I'm able to withstand, but I don't, I don't ever want anybody else to have to go through some of the stuff that I, you know, I had to go through. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, and my motivating factor was never ever trying to. You know, show somebody on the beast. 
I was, you know, the bad was always, you know, I did what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? No, I, I, I got you. <laughs> yeah. You, you, know, you can ask people that same question, depending on the person. It's going, you know, some people are like, yo, I tricked my money off. Like, like I went and I got a, you know, a chain. I went and I bought a fleet of cars. So the fact that you're like, nah, when that when that money started rolling in and I started to see real checks, my first big pay purchase was a was a crib. That ain't bad because you're still a young man at that time. I built a studio in it. And, you know, and started, you know, it was it was dope. That's a, one of the reasons why I was able to keep, you know, keep servicing as the game changes, be able to continue on servicing music at a high volume mm -hmm. um, whether it was the mixtape site so you know what I'm saying or somebody needs me to write some or a feature uh the studio on the bottom of the house it uh it helped a lot of people you know what I'm saying so um yeah that was the biggest that was I think that's the biggest and the best purchase I I made with anyone anyway. that's dope that's dope right around the same time uh, 2008 you make the double XL freshman cover. And um you in good company. You you on the same cover as as Boosie, um, Lupe Fiasco, Young Dro was on that cover. Um, you know, one of one of the dopest lyricists that never really got a chance to blow to his potential, my man Joel Ortiz, you know, just just a freaking monster when it comes to them uh, words. Did it shock you when you got chosen for that cover? Yeah, yeah. But you got to know this is the first one, and I was a freshman for real. I had been listening to Boosie, you know, probably I don't know, probably ten years or eight years before that. I knew exactly who Joe was. Been listening to Joe for almost a decade. Joe, 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 he's a staple in the city. Ain't nobody messing with Joe. But because it was the first freshman, they had to go find everybody. And these dudes were having singles hits at this time. Certain records and certain stuff was popping. So just to be in, just to be in that company uh was a blessing. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, you can see a lot of those names are, you know, staples. They ain't no, you know, they've been doing it. You can't step on their big steps. Nah, they, those, you was in a company of a lot of good people. And the one thing I give to, to XXL is they choose, like a lot of the, of, of the artists that they choose to be on that cover have gone on to do some amazing things in their career. Like these are not just one hit of quitters. Mm. Okay, um, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm saying I, I remember the I remember those folks, man. I appreciate them. It definitely is love. You know something? I gotta ask you. It it, it was it was, and I, if my memory served me correct, this is something like 2010. You didn't you put out a mixtape, and I'm not saying a song, a mixtape a day for a straight month. During the month of February? Yep. How, yeah. how does that even happen? Like, the, the, people can't even record that fast. Yeah. Uh, some people can't. Um, people that knew knew that I, I could do it. I mean, did you know you could do it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm laying, I'm doing whole, I'm doing whole songs in 20 minutes. I understand. I already had my settings. I already had like this is before I decided to do it. So I don't got so great at understanding the mathematics and pitches and stuff like that. I will. I will find the once I found the tempo and the and and the the note that the the beat was in. I would just link it with with my with my presets. So. If I say, hey, 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 it's got all my echoes, all my reverb, all of my, everything is already there. So all I really have to do is do what I do. And I never wrote. 
I don't have to take the I don't take the time to sit down and write something and see what it looked like and all that. I just go at it. The reason why I can do that is because I know how to edit more than I know how to rap. You know what I'm saying? So I, I know I knew how to I knew how to just it was easy. It's easy. It's mathematics and it's simple. Um, now it's everybody's doing it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody. That's the style of recording now. You know what I'm saying? But uh, before it became a style of recording, you know, the booth, going to, going to booth, sit down and write, and then go and spit it. Like, that's dope. But my brain thinks a lot faster than that. I don't need that. You know what I'm saying? You know, nobody, it's unheard of. Nobody runs a, nobody runs a, uh, a three nine until somebody runs a three nine, and then everybody starts running three nines. So that's kind of what it was. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I mean that's that's almost you know incredible. I don't know if anybody have ever done that since. I I never heard anybody being able to do it up until that point. So you might be in a league all your own because to put out, you know, granted February has twenty eight days. But to put out a mixtape a day is damn near like you know coming from my standpoint, it, it feels impossible. And I don't care how quick you can record the record, but you saying like, yo, I, I I can record a record in twenty minutes. That's insane that your brain processes that much information that quickly. That's a gift by itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that you know. You know. Like I overthink stuff or I'm in my head, that's my brain. Like I could take this conversation, a strip, well, I don't have to strip nothing off of it. I could just break it apart looking at the uh looking at the sound waves and move words around and turn a whole conversation into a song. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it ain't nothing new now because people doing it on YouTube, you hear it everywhere. But I could I would I could do that. Uh I could do that like. 17, 18 years ago. So it could, could, when you, you just think I'm a rapper and people, oh, that the world is up, how you gonna do that? Like, no, nah, you really don't know what I know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what you know. Okay, you know something? I think it's 2016. Bad Boy had a reunion tour. Uh, Boys in the Hood performed in Atlanta when the tour came through Atlanta. Did you join? that tour and have an opportunity to perform and do your records? Yeah, yeah I did. I was thankful for it. You know, I, I think I did, I, did a, I did a couple of dates on the tour. Um, it was dope. It was amazing. Especially to see just how big Bad Boy, the imprint, the footprint, that uh, it's huge, you know? It's huge and it ain't stopped yet. You know what I mean? Uh, that, that was it was crazy how that, that that much energy, that many records, that many stars, that many generations in one building. I really take over. I I had never seen that like you know what I'm saying like like that was my first time seeing a label. There ain't that many labels like that. That that long term of the culture and be able to you know pack up the place from the dressing rooms to the, you know, top seats. Um, every night, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah, that was an amazing tour, man. Um, and like you said, there, there were so many stars that were born out of that era um, that came out of that imprint. So I know for you, having an opportunity to get on that stage and do your thing amongst family and amongst being part of this, this dynasty in music, this, this, era that was really changed by that bad boy sound, I know that had to be a hell of a feeling for you. Huge, 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 bro. He was bigger than, bigger than me, bigger than me. Let, let, let me ask you, do you think Boys in the Hood will ever get back together? Cause it seemed like the group just disbanded and you never heard from them again. Do y'all keep in touch? Uh, is there a chance that we'll ever get a new recording from y'all? I tell you, I tell you, let's put it. I put it out there. I'm, 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 de I'm definitely down. I'm definitely. Down. If I get the phone call, you know what I'm saying. Uh, we, I'm ready to initiate. And I'm thinking to me, I'm, you know, we out here. 
in a big way. So time, I'm open up, you know what I'm saying? Let's go. I think it would be dope. I think it'd be dope for hip hop, man. Before I let you up out of here, what are you working on these days? What projects can we expect from you? Um, right now I am working on a new album. Um, I'm pretty much done. Uh, I'm gonna do a lot of flexing, man. This album is an album that I want to do first. Yeah. Uh, but time is everything. And this album ain't my album. But I've been wanting to do it. And I get to do it. Um, so it's going to be the biggest album I've ever been a part of. And um, it's going to change a lot of stuff. Any features on it or are you doing it straight solo? Right now, I ain't, I ain't focused on features. I got uh, I got a message to deliver, so I ain't worried about features. Um, yeah, it's for the women. It's for who, who. If you know, you know. But it's and, and when you plan to drop it? I don't know. I gotta give. It, I got. I need to give it. The, you know, like we give some good counseling. We figure out a, a correct date and have a uh, a scheduled rollout. You know, but I think we'll we having a listening session. It's gonna be done. Uh, it's gonna be done before June third, June twenty third. So yeah, I'll be I'll be officially finished with it. Mixed mouse ready to roll June twenty third. Release of it. I don't, you know, I haven't got there yet. But done deal. Um, I'm looking forward to it, my brother. I enjoyed our conversation, and you know, as, as always, I'm wishing you the best of 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 lessons and success in everything that you do. Thanks for giving me a little bit of your time, Zo. Big prayers. I appreciate you. Love, my brother. Appreciate it. My brother. Much love, success, and respect. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.